Okay, now look at this. x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 6. It turns out that this factors like this. You can factor this as x plus the square root of 3 times x minus the square root of 3 times x minus 2. And notice these numbers here, the square root of 3 and the negative square root of 3, those are irrational numbers. So if we list the zeros for this polynomial, the zeros are, they would be negative square root of 3, the positive square root of 3, and 2. And we see that some of these zeros here are irrational numbers. Now if we were to take this polynomial and apply the rational zeros theorem here, and let's see what that tells us. The rational zeros theorem says I'm going to take factors of 6 divided by factors of 1 and that's going to give me this list plus or minus 1, 2, 3, or 6. Not a very big list. Eight numbers altogether. The denominators ended up being really simple because of that one. And let's try some of these. Let's see what we get from this. I'm going to come up here on the right where I have a little more room and I'm going to start with 1. Try 1. So we put a 1 here and set up the synthetic division. I need 1, negative 2, negative 3, and 6. Okay, 1. 1 times 1 is 1. I add, I get negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. I add and I get negative 4. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. I add and I get 2. So that didn't work. So 1, our next one to try is 2. So let's try 2. 1, negative 2, negative 3, 6. And we draw a line bring down the 1, 1 times 2 is 2, that gives us a 0, and 0 times 2 is 0, and then we add here and we get negative 3, and negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and we add there and we get a 0, so that worked. That means that x minus 2 is a factor, so I can write x minus 2, and then the other factor here is going to be x squared plus 0x minus 3 or just x squared minus 3. And you can see that that factors right there to what we had earlier. I'll just write it again down here. x minus 2 times x plus square root of 3 times x minus square root of 3. We're actually thinking about this as the difference of two squares to give us those two zeros there. Now, the rational zeros theorem helps us find Notice here, it helped us find the 0, the 2, or the factor, that was rational. This one right here, the rational zeros theorem helps us find rational zeros. It would not lead us to these irrational numbers. They don't show up in this list. That's why it's called the rational zeros theorem. And even though the theorem doesn't help us find these irrational roots, finding the one that is rational still helps. In this case, we see that once we found that one, we're down to a linear factor and a quadratic. That is, a factor of degree 1 and a factor of degree 2. And we can always deal with a quadratic, even if it factors as something irrational. We can always either factor it or use the, the quadratic formula to break it apart into pieces if we need to. Well, the point of this example is not just to show you another example of the rational zeros theorem, but to show you why it's called the rational zeros theorem. We found the rational zero. It won't help us find the irrational zeros, but finding any factor at all certainly helps us factor the polynomial.